everybody. If you were um, here earlier today, this is the second uh, live we're doing today. I'm super excited about this one um, with Kashif Khan. Am I saying your name right? In the you can say it however you want. Oh. <laughs> You're so awesome because I'm <laughs> horrible at names and spelling. So I love so the funny it. thing is, it's, it's actually Kashif. Kashif. But I, I didn't know that until I was like 18 because I got called Kashif growing up by everybody. Wow. Kashif. And finally, one day my mom told me, I think I should tell you how your name's pronounced. Oh, that's so funny. Great to yeah. like, Okay, thanks, mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, a little background. If you haven't joined us before, um, it's Dr. Jill Live, and we're on almost 90 episodes. So you can find them all at my YouTube channel on the videos or anywhere you listen to podcasts on iTunes. Um, always have fun learning from my guest, and today will be no different um, on that. I will introduce um, Kashif in just a moment. Um, you can also find all of my blogs and resources at Jill Carnahan com tons and tons of free resources there for you on mold and environmental toxicity and Lyme disease and all the many illnesses that our patients deal with all free all there. Um, Dr. Jill Health, you can find my products and services there as well. So let's dive in and let me introduce my guest today and then super excited about um, the opportunity for you guys to go deeper into your genetics. Um, often what I find with patients is, uh, you know, we'll look at environmental toxicity and infections and all of that. The genes are the foundation and they really, really do make a difference in treatment protocols. So I do find this incredibly helpful and more and more patients are being empowered to learn about this, to ask their doctors about it. And this is today going to give you a great resource that you can access on your own and get more information. So um, let me introduce my guest, uh, Kashif Khan, Chief Executive Officer and founder of the DNA Company, uh, where personalized medicine is being pioneered through unique insights into the human genome. And what I love about you do about what you guys do, which we'll talk about today, is you make it really relevant and really easy to understand. Because what I found, I've been doing functional medicine 20 years. And even as a physician who understands this stuff, depending on how you report the data, it makes all the difference, doesn't it? And you guys have really, really made an effort to report the data in a way that's understandable and that makes actually practical applications. So I'm super excited to talk about that. Um, so with the largest study of its kind globally, the DNA company has developed a functional approach to genomic interpretation overlying environment, nutrition, and lifestyle on the genetic blueprint to create personalized and deterministic health outcomes. Kind of like what we were just saying. Um, <laughs> growing up in Vancouver, Canada as an immigrant, uh, Kashif developed an industrious entrepreneurial spirit from a young age. Prior to his tenure at the DNA company, he advised a number of high growth startups and a variety of industries, including luxury retail, technology, finance, fine arts, healthcare, tourism, and real estate. He participated in over 3 million in revenue in his own retail business prior to launching consulting services to help others thrive. As Kashif dived into the field of functional genomics as a CEO of the DNA company, it was revealed that his own neural wiring was actually genetically designed to be entrepreneurial. How cool. I want to hear yeah. more about that. <laughs> I want to hear about that. Um, I, I have found I have, there's a gene they call the empathy gene. So I don't know if you know oh, uh, about that, but there's one that relates. We'll get to into that. that. Okay, cool. <laughs> However, his genes also revealed a particular sensitivity to pollutants. I have that too. This inspired him to develop custom nutrient supplementation to enhance this um, poor detoxification pathway. And like me, to, for us both to deal with pollutants, chemicals, and reducing risk of long-term illness. Um, this is so relevant because as we spoke right before we got on live um, here in Superior in Louisville, we just got over December 30th, the largest wildfire disaster in the history right. of Colorado uh, came through burning over a thousand homes and businesses. And so we've been directly affected. And what I've realized, I've known wildfire is damaging, but it is probably more toxic than mold exposure as far as the amount of plastic chemicals, tooling, mm -hmm. benzene. So this is very relevant because what happens in someone like me or you or I, um, we have issues with uh, either production of glutathione or whatever detoxification pathways. So we're more susceptible to the environmental impacts and things like wildfires are happening more frequently. Um, so anyway, that's a whole other issue, but let me enter, let me just, let let you go. And I want to hear first, how did you get into this? Sounds like you had some personal experience. Tell us how you really got. Yeah, into I did. I, I was sick and I, I went through the thing that you said about, you know, data not being so useful unless it's interpreted properly. Really data is dumb. It's, it's yes. a bunch of information. And unless you know what question to ask, you're not going to get an insight, which is much more important than data. Right. So Correct. that was my experience because my previous life, I was a PR and marketing 
a firm owner. That's what I did. I, I'm in Toronto, Canada right now. That's where our firm was run. We help small, medium, large companies grow. And I got sick. Oh. I was, I'm 42 now. I was 35, 36 at the time. Eczema, psoriasis. I had migraines all the time. Wow. Uh, I had uh, acid reflux issue. I couldn't eat anything. I was depressed at least twice a month. So all this stuff was being treated as separate siloed health conditions with a doctor for this and a doctor for this and a pill for this and a cream for this. And I just kept going down that rabbit hole and finding more problems that I needed to fix. And not, none of them were being resolved. They were all sort of being maintained. Yeah. And you've heard, you hear this story so much when somebody stumbles across functional medicine and their whole life changes yeah. and they understand root cause. And for me, how you get to root cause is different paths. For me, it was through genetics. So I understood that all of this stuff wasn't many different things that I happened to be you know, subjected to. Mm -hmm. These were the results of my poor choices and what my genetics led to, meaning you talk about detox. detox. Yeah. Forget about ability to detoxify. There's certain genes that I don't even have. There's something called a copy number variation or forget about the variant or a SNP that we talk about. I'm literally missing the GSTT1 gene, which is the most important glutathione gene. I don't even have it. So meanwhile, my office was sitting a few floors above a manufacturing company oh. with pollutants and solder and all sorts of stuff coming through the vent. All And you wonder why I had migraines and my business partner had no issue. He used yeah. to drive me home vomiting. Wow. Yeah. What a relative. This is really interesting. I mentioned this one other time, but I just found out I've been interviewing my family members for the book I'm writing. And my grandmother, I just found out this year, she's 90 years old. Um, back in when she was 15, her father moved her over an auto dealership that he had bought and they had the car um, auto body shop underneath. And so benzene right. and lead and things kind of like what right. you're saying in the office. And literally it's a liver toxicant. Her father died of liver uh, cancer. Her mother died of liver failure. Her brother died of metastatic cancer, like over every single person in her family. Family. And she was yep. able to get out because she was the oldest one of the children. But same thing. And her genetics, like mine, are have some impaired detoxification. And this is what you said is so important because this is the one thing. This was that trigger point for me where I literally took the keys to our marketing company, handed it to the staff, and said, Thank you. You own it now. Wow. I found what I need to work. I literally walked away and said, I got to build this thing. And what was it is exactly what you just said, which I learned. First of all, when I first looked at genetics, it failed me also. I didn't get yeah. much out of it, mm -hmm. right? It's when I started to look at functional genomics, meaning let's first understand how the body works. What mm -hmm. are the systems and pathways that are actually, you know, the biochemistry that's going on and then reverse engineer what genes instruct them as per the system, as per the map. It's not then what a doctor would say, well, you have a genetic propensity to liver disease in your, in your family. That's, that's what the answer would be. Yeah. It's three out of three. So it's in your genes. There's no, they were not born with a liver disease. Yeah. They were born healthy. So they should be able to stay healthy. What they are born with genetically was the inability to deal with that glutathione pathway properly yes. for which the end result mm -hmm. is too much load on the liver. Yes. Which equals mm -hmm. liver disease. So they weren't yeah. born with a propensity to disease. They were born to overworked hardware. Correct. Right. This particular organ is struggling and struggling and struggling because you're making the wrong choices. So now all of a sudden, if you understand the systems and you understand the core things that lead to good health, hormones, detox, methylation, your anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. system, your neurochemicals in your brain and how you perceive things, yeah. for example, why I'm entrepreneurial, you then know what to focus on. And then it doesn't matter what all these spokes of different diseases that come out of the central hub. Right. You don't need to have any of them. And if you have them, stop treating them, reverse them because you get to the root cause. And that's what was the light bulb for me that all of a sudden my eczema was gone, psoriasis was gone. I haven't had a cold or a flu in like four years. I used to be in bed three times every winter season for 10 days at a time because I just wasn't healthy, right? And that's all gone now. Wow. Fascinating and so true. And again, I've used your testing on myself and on patients, and it's profound to understand those pieces of the puzzle. And, and there, there can be very small little things that we find out that make all the difference in their health right. trajectory. Right. And, and going back to what you said there about easy to use, that was one of the very first things you said. I actually learned that. So there's a company up here called Rogers, which is one of our big telecom, like our AT&T, uh -huh. right? Uh, and their chief digital officer was one of our patients. And he's, he went through, we used to do a highly hands-on executive process because we didn't know how to make it available to everybody. And that was very expensive because our scientists would have to interpret the DNA, yeah. figure it out, and then build a plan, then work with you. And he said, what you have here 
can literally flip healthcare it's on on its head you just need to make it easy to use mm -hmm. that's my number one advice to you as a chief digital officer of a multi-billion dollar company make it easy so that's what i then put my full focus on and the number one thing there in making it easy to use is people don't care what their gene results are they care here's what's wrong and here's how to fix it that's yeah. it yes. right here's yeah. your problem i figured it out tell mm -hmm. me that quickly what's really going on and here's what i recommend that will fix it for you the genes might inform that. Great. There's we know there's science to back it up, but I don't need to know this snip and this version and 20,000 letters that write a right. gene. So what we do now is we the same interpretation our scientists were doing when they would read all this raw data. Uh -huh. Our artificial intelligence platform, which we built, does uh -huh. that interpretation and the report the consumer looks like or the clinician, because it's also hard for clinicians to interpret, speaks to the condition. I don't need to know I have. GSTT1 null, which I have, right. I need to know you're at higher risk for liver disease. You're at higher risk for mold sensitivity. You're at higher risk for chemical sensitivity. Oh, by the way, here's why. Yes. Now I can take action. Now I can apply it. And that's, that's what we did. And I want to speak as a clinician too, because I have used uh, dozens of genetic companies, some of them better than others. And right. the big thing for us is sometimes we'll get reports like an, if we would print yeah. them, they're electronic an inch thick, and there's no way to go through that with a patient in a normal office visit. So yep. even more so your doctor, if yeah. you do get these results, especially I know genetics really well. So even complex tests, I can usually find the important stuff quickly for patients, but many, many doctors, this is new to them. So if you bring in a report that you've done, you're overwhelming them. Sadly, they shouldn't be overwhelmed, right? But that's the way we are. Cause there's a lot going on. Yep. And so you bring this huge report and it's completely overwhelming and they don't know how to help you this is what i love about your company is you're going directly to the patient and you're empowering them and granted they can do changes on their own but if they're working with a great functional or integrative doctor this can enhance their visits too and it helps the doctor like me to make easy decisions on what next to do exactly it's fast and easy to the point and we speak to the condition and it's actionable it's not when people think about genetics, they think, oh, I'm going to find out if I have an 80% chance of Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. right? What does that give you other than anxiety for the next three right. years, right? That does not do anything for you other than like, it's a tease towards a problem. Yes. What you actually need to know, why does Alzheimer's happen? Correct. Correct. Right. What causes it? Why does Health Canada now call Alzheimer's type three diabetes? Correct. Very quietly. Your doctor does probably doesn't even know that, mm -hmm. but they refer, they just, they have to, it was so obvious. So now it's not about a gene for which we clinically tested 80% of people that had this gene variant got Alzheimer's, but you still can't tell me why. Yeah. The why is the most important part. Once we get into the why, then you are looking at actually very different genes. Just like you said, liver versus detox. Yeah. Liver is the outcome, right? Detox is the, the root. So that's right. what we do. It's not about, hey, you got 80% chance of Alzheimer's. It's here's the choices you need to make for you to avoid it. Here's the choices that you need to make for you to 100% get it. And now the choice is yours, which path do you take? Yeah. So I love that. It, Cause like you, I have a lot of detox genetics. I grew up on a farm with atrazine and chemicals and things. I got breast cancer right. at 25 years old. And so I'm like, and, and I had the eczema and all those psoriasis, all those right. things. And all those things are just evidence as of a poor detox pathway. Once yeah. I knew the underlying cause, I could go to nutrients and diet and lifestyle. And again, what I love about your reports is you guys have taken the science and put together pretty easy to implement uh, interventions, depending on the genetics. Maybe let's talk about a few of the, like maybe give an example of a couple sure. of the genes you might see and then what an intervention would be. We've already talked about glutathione. You and I both have those. And yeah. uh, go ahead. Well, you, you know, you mentioned breast cancer and I think that's important to talk about because first of all, it's one of those big, scary things that every woman is worried about. And I would say of all the research we've done, so you mentioned in the beginning that we've done this large study where we've sat in front of thousands of people. We actually met all our patients, documented everything. And I would say the biggest area that needs the most change is female hormone health. Yes. That's the area where the experience sucks so bad, you know, that Delta value between what you're told and what's actually possible. It's the, all this gray area. It's very black and white if you understand it. So if we use as an example, most women have heard of the BRCA gene mm -hmm. and it's a scary four letter word. And if you ask a woman, do you want the BRCA gene? She will say no, because she doesn't know what it means. And even if you ask the doctor, should I, it's not about a gene, it's about what version of it, but then you ask the question, what does that gene do? So if you have a particular variant, it's a, it's a tumor suppressor, it's a repair man or a repair woman. So it goes out and fixes problems. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cause cancer, Correct. right? But if you have cancer, 
if you have a tumor, it's meant to go to work and suppress it. Mm -hmm. If you have a not so good repair tool, it's not going to do such a good job repairing. So the clinical answer is, oh, bad BRCA, you don't repair well, go get a double mastectomy. That's prevention, yeah. right? Or you can ask, why did the cancer happen in the first place? I have a repairman that can't repair. How about if I don't break it? Correct. Right. Okay. I love that you're saying this because here's the question I get all the time. 25 year old. I was the youngest diagnosed in 2001 in my medical school in Loyola in Chicago, which is a major medical center. So at that time, 25 was unheard of to get breast yeah. cancer. Every single person. Oh, do you have the BRCA gene? No, yes. I don't. And 80, <laughs> 90% of us as young women who, you know, these, these oddballs that are one in a million chances of us getting it at that age, we don't have that gene because that's not the root cause. It's yeah. more of these bigger, like you said, so it's very relevant because a lot of people think that gene is the indicator. It's, it's one thing, but it's no. after the fact, like you said, the repair mechanism. And it's not like for me, it was all about detox and chemicals and exactly. hormone regulators. So very relevant, especially to my story. So I'll give you an actual example that's probably related to your story. Story, And, and like you said, BRCA is the thing that goes and fixes it, doesn't cause it. So, and by the way, to answer your question about, you know, 25, it was unheard of. Well, it's also because the level of chemicals when you were 25 was also unheard of. Yes. One generation ago, it didn't look like that. If anybody can go Google chemical usage in the United States over yes. time historical, and they will see a chart that looks like this. Right. And food. Yeah, we are all toxic. swimming in toxic soup. And literally, that's the elephant in the room. I say it every day. The toxic load is just exponentially increasing. It's and incredible. since 20 years ago, since my diagnosis, there's 16, there's 23. There's a lot of women yes. younger than me that's actually way more common in the last decade. Yep. So now let's dive into the why, the most important part. And most women, I mean, you were exposed to an extreme load, but most women, experience breast breast cancer in and around the menopause age, mm -hmm. right? It's typically when it happens for the most part, not everybody, but for the most part. So now we're getting into the why. So you, when you look at the hormone cascade, and by the way, it's the same for a man or a woman, women do a monthly, men do a daily. What do you do? Progesterone turns into testosterone, turns into estrogen, which then turns into an estrogen metabolite, and then you get rid of it. So we have to ask three questions. What is your dominance? What does your hormone profile look like? Are you more androgenized, more testosterone, or are you more estrogenized? There's a lot more estrogen, or are you somewhere in the middle, right? That's, it's possible. There's different variations based on your genes. Now that we've identified that, and suppose as an example, a woman is hormone, uh, her dominance is estrogen. So she's highly estrogen dominant. So that woman would, if you put Kim Kardashian and Kendall Jenner together, it's Kim Kardashian, yeah. right? She's going to have the big curves, the beautiful hair, beautiful skin, uh, but she's going to have a whole other bunch of issues that come with it. Kendall, thin supermodel, but she's probably going to have fertility issues, acne, hair problems, et cetera. So step one, estrogen dominant. Step two, before you clear that estrogen in your monthly cycle, you convert it into a metabolite. Two, four, or 16 hydroxy estrogen. Two is great. You want that. It's clean, healthy. Four and 16 are highly toxic. 16 being more toxic than four. So now suppose you're estrogen dominant and you're producing 16 hydroxy estrogen. Mm -hmm. Then you have to third step, see how do you clear it? And it comes back to the same detox genes along with something called COMP, another clearance enzyme, right? How mm -hmm. well do I get rid of this toxic stuff that I make every month? So now someone's estrogen dominant, estrogen toxic, doesn't clear well. They're still not sick, correct? right? They're still not born with a problem. And I want to mention still, really quick, sorry to interrupt you, but the hormones like estrogen are treated like drugs by our liver. So people are like, oh, well, that's something I'm making. That's okay. Yes. No, if your liver is not working, if your detox is not working, these are just like extra drugs to your system because they, your body has to detoxify. So even exactly. though in your body makes, if you don't have detox working, it it's like a drug to your system. Yeah. It's like you're, you're plugging the exit route mm -hmm. and everything's just getting clogged up at the exit. It's going to, over time, reach that threshold, which is why does, why does it take until that menopause age, right? Why does it take that long? So there's a couple of things that happen. You no longer have a menstrual cycle. So that, okay, I don't clear well. My glutathione pathways, my detox pathways aren't that good. But at least I had a menstrual cycle where I was getting rid of most, most of it. Yeah. Now I don't do that anymore. 85% of North American women will be on a birth control pill for an elongated period. Mm -hmm. It's part of the culture. Yeah. So that's more estrogen, more fuel to the fire, more metabolite, more that needs to be cleared. When you no longer have that cycle when you're menopausal, and you may also be on a hormone therapy because mm -hmm. your doctor told you to, right? 
what happens is your body doesn't clear it because you don't have a cycle. Your body starts to store it in fatty tissue because it wants to keep it away from the organs, wants to keep you safe. Where do you have fatty tissue? In your hips and your breasts, right? And what's in the breast that was never designed to deal with that level of toxic insult? All that sensitive, the, the, all the glands, receptors, all the hormone yeah. receptors. Yeah. You were not, this, this was not designed to deal with that. You Correct. were meant to not have 15 years of birth control pill your body never understood that that's what you were going to do to yourself. Yeah. You weren't meant to have chemicals in every single which way you go that are endocrine disruptors that mimic hormones that cause even more problems. You weren't meant to be using a Teflon plant pan that is literally an endocrine disruptor. All these things that are a load that take you from, well, I, I might have a bad profile, but I'm still not sick. Well, here's the load. That's why we say environment, nutrition, lifestyle. What did you do with the cards you were dealt? Correct. And for some women, women that not their fault they just didn't know because we're not taught this yeah did the wrong things increase that estrogen load more metabolite more inflammation faster breast cancer then after all that BRCA should go to work and try and help you yes but it, so I, right? I love 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 this because again what you're uh, pointing at is um what women don't realize a lot of them maybe those listening here know because i've talked about it a lot but you mentioned endocrine disruptors they are everywhere the first thing i did the year after my cancer was why did this happen i went and looked at chemicals and i looked at bath and beauty products i looked at cleaning products i looked at all the things in my home and that i put on my body and many of them were endocrine disruptors and then on the farm i grew up with toxic organophosphates atrazine etc and many yeah. many herbicides pesticides load in my well water, you know, you can see it happening. So there's a lot of things in your environment that are contributing to an estrogen like um, sensation in your body. It's basically like those chemicals look like estrogen to your cells. Yes. So if you have, you have this load of excess estrogen in your body, you're not detoxifying that you're making yourself. And then the chemicals you put on your face, phthalates, parabens, um, organophosphates on your food, if you're not eating organic and then pesticides and herbicides, these things all add to that load. And that's what we're talking about. Yep. You have to understand that our DNA is 250,000 years old, meaning that we, that's what we inherited. It started in around that time that people started to look the way we look today. So this blip in time, this two generations, maybe three of heavy chemical usage, heavy, like all the stuff we're talking about here, we're talking about like 100, 150 years versus 250,000 years of what we inherited that, that we were designed to do that. Yes. So imagine how impactful it is on the system that was designed to do what those people did for 250,000 years until the last few hundred years, there was kind of industrial industrialization, the smog, pollution, et cetera, et cetera. It's such a new blip mm -hmm. versus what we're designed to do that we just can't handle it. We're not designed for it. Now, this is, this leads me to another thing. I'm going to focus again on women because I think it's so impactful and so important. 66% of women who have a cardiovascular issue will die on that first instance. Mm, yeah. It's much more impactful for women. Yeah. Yes, right? I heard this. <laughs> yeah. Much more impactful. No previous warning sign, no mm -hmm. pain, no nothing. Heart attack, boom. On that first heart attack, 66, it's much lower for men because we don't also have that estrogen toxicity load, yeah. which is also causing that inflammatory issue, which leads to that cardiovascular disease. So why do you have that cardiovascular disease? Again, I'm brown. Right, I'm a Middle Eastern mutt. I have a little bit of Pakistani, Indian, Turkish, Afghani, like there's a little bit of everything in me. So I'm told that genetically, I have a bad heart, uh -huh. that I should expect to get diabetes and cardiovascular disease, et cetera. And guess what? My dad had all of those things and he died when I was 17. My yeah. grandmother had them, my uncles had them, right? It's not because they have bad hearts, it's because their hearts were designed for what their ancestors did who never had cardiovascular diseases until they moved here. Yeah. Right. And the so industrialized why, diet, the standard American diet, plus the chemicals, plus all these things in our body. Like exactly. Inside. So now if you inherit the genetic legacy of people that did not have cardiovascular diseases, what did you inherit? And this goes to speak to women and, and why is there that compound effect of hormones plus bad cardiovascular genetics equals a problem. So 9P21 determines how robust the endothelial lining is. So heart disease typically doesn't happen in the heart. It's usually in the arteries right? Calcification, blockage, cholesterol, all that stuff. That then leads to the heart not getting a blood heart attack, right? Mm -hmm. So the inner lining of that artery is called the endothelial. There's different quality versions. You can have a stainless steel endothelial and you see grandma smoking when she's 95, never got yeah. sick. She probably has that, right? Then you also see somewhat normal version, which actually isn't what you're supposed to have. You should have the stainless steel version. And then there's a paper thin, 
prone to inflammation. Mm -hmm. If you test most South Asian people who are told they have bad hearts, there's nothing wrong with the heart. They typically have bad endothelial linings, poor yes. quality, because they just didn't need good quality because there was nothing causing inflammation, right? right? Now, they also typically have poor detox pathways like myself because didn't need it. Yeah. Everything was organic and pure. There was nothing to detox. So didn't need it. They also have poor methylation or anti-inflammatory pathways because if there's no detox or if there's no toxins, there's no inflammation. Mm -hmm. If there's no inflammation, what anti-inflammatory mechanism do you need? What are you fighting? Right. Right. So that whole methylation pathway is usually suboptimal. So that sort of perfect storm of then all of a sudden changing the environment, nutrition and lifestyle and having the inflammatory loads and then cause damage, literally abrasions to this endothelial, then you start to get inflammation here for which you don't have the anti-inflammatory system to fight it. Yeah. So what does your body do? It actually deploys cholesterol as a hormone to reduce the inflammation. And when cholesterol meets toxicity, it hardens, it gets deposited, and then you get the beginnings of cholesterolemia. Now take that and compound it with a woman who has estrogen toxicity dominance, and she's getting it from two fronts which is why when you finally cross that threshold where you have the heart attack, it's, it's hard to, to recover because it's so much more powerful and impactful for a woman, right? So you got to think about the heart disease is not the disease. The heart disease is for 50 years, you did the wrong thing. Correct, correct. You abused this organ like crazy yeah. and now it gave up. Yeah, I love this because it's so relative to women. I was just thinking I didn't plan on doing this, but I literally have, if we take just two minutes, I could share what my results were. I'm going to be real sure. vulnerable. And you obviously know what they look like. And you can, <laughs> say, you can show, um, now the reports might have up, been updated since I originally got these, but they're still beautiful. And I think are very relevant because what I've noticed in the last couple of years, the way you're reporting is just continuing to, so forgive me if this is an older version, I'm going to yeah, share yeah, it now though. Because again, I think it'd be, okay, you can see my screen. So I, yeah. Uh, so yeah, these let's are, talk about this. <laughs> and I can go these are our issues. clinical reports. Perfect. So th this is not what a consumer gets. And there's a very specific reason why this requires interpretation. Yes, yes. Right. So uh, what does this map mean? This is your hormonal cascade. So as we said, on the far left, you start with progesterone. In the middle, you convert that to uh, sorry testosterone. And then on the bottom, you drop down to estrogen. Mm -hmm. It's, it seems that simple, but because of these red and green and, you know, orange lights, there's different speeds at which these genes are operating. And I just want to say that was brilliant. Again, this has been a couple of years now, your uh, reports are even better and they're much more consumer friendly. But to me, this was so brilliant, the red, green, yellow lights, because you can just glance at this and see, oh, those pathways are kind of like red lights, yes. right? So easy. Yeah. So what do we know about you? First step, your hormone pool is very low to begin with. Right, and you're not converting progesterones into testosterone. But yeah. the good news is, if you go up to the upper left, you're not clearing those androgens, those testosterones. Yeah. You use them for a while, which is why even if you look at yourself, you're more androgenized. You have the more chiseled, which uh -huh. you know women want the beautiful elongated face and the chiseled body, right? So that comes from holding on to these this testosterone for a while. You don't then go across to the right and produce DHT. Which is why I still have hair, <laughs> lots of hair. <laughs> this is why, exactly. So women that are suffering from acne or hair loss or PCOS, polycystic ovarian uh -huh. syndrome, this is all rooted in this DHT. And of the DHT you produce, there's a yellow light, which on the mm -hmm. top right, which means you're getting rid of it at sort of a medium yeah. fast speed. So and it's I'm really not a concern this too, because this is like so really easy with the cancer, what you mentioned before. So I'll just explain cytochromes are our liver's phase one ability to detoxify things. So I love the way this is set up because these are like, we know for OH in the middle here is one of those DNA damaging hormones right. from estrogen. And you can clearly see, you can explain there what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Go down another page. Sure. This is the sample. Then your results are, I think on the next, there you go. So yeah. you red light all the way across. So what does ah. that mean? You're, <laughs> Yeah, your metabolic, your, your conversion into the toxic stuff is very slow, which is good news, right? Uh, but from what I remember, your detox pathways aren't the best. So if you go down terrible. a couple, yeah, yeah. so, so this is why you have to look at things functionally. Is that the sample? And then this is mine. Yeah, here we go. This here, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now, and this is why genetics isn't this gene means this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now imagine if I only told you about one gene, DHT, you're at less risk of toxic testosterone. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what if I don't clear it well? Yeah. Right? Uh, what if I also produce estrogen metabolites? You have to look at the full cascade, which means biochemistry first. What does the body actually do? And then what genes instruct each step? So now what we do know is of the toxic metabolites you do produce, 
Um, actually, in the GSTT family, you're, you are clearing quite well. It's your SOD2 or your uh, oxidative stress genes that aren't doing the best. And your COMPT also isn't doing the best. So that means you would probably want support here. Even though you don't produce so much of the 4-hydroxy, you still want to do something to get ahead of, of the little that you have. Let's clear it. Let's supplement it. Let's do some things to get rid of it, right? And where do you focus? SOD2 is a gene that determines how well you deal with clearance at the mitochondrial level. So whereas GSTT1 is like the police force in the blood, it's going around binding onto toxins, sending it to the liver to metabolize glutathione, right? Uh, GSTP1 is sort of that first line of defense of the lungs. I breathe in mold, fumes, whatever. I have these soldiers that are helping me here. This is literally right at the cell. So SOD2 mm -hmm. in the middle here is your cells take in energy. I'm uh, sorry, they take in oxygen and, and nutrition to create energy, right? That's what they're all doing the same thing. In that process, they also create oxidant. So oxygen becomes oxidant, which is toxic. Yes. And you don't, and you don't want. So some people don't deal with that, including yourself so well. Yeah. So if you get into oxidative stress, you're going to struggle more than a normal, another person, which means if you were to become a marathon runner, you're likely to develop more wrinkles. Mm -hmm. Your hair is going to turn gray faster. Yeah. This right? is oxidative stress, which is our like root cause of the damage of DNA. And, and yes. for me, it's interesting, just a little side note, the hydrogen tabs and hydrogen breathing machine basically neutralizes this. And I found that to right. be a game changer for me. Um, right. Ex exactly. So now you know where to focus. Yeah. Okay, right? so thanks for letting me go there, but I thought yeah. I want to be able to see how amazing this is in the information and how, and again, you've got way better reports than even those now, but yeah, so, it's so clear and easy to see the red light, the green light, and now again, you've got some interpretation, a lot more um, information. Maybe you can even tell us what you've done since those sure. reports. So what, what we did was we went through 7,000 people one by one by one, like internally as mm -hmm. clinical patients. And we learned, as I said a while ago, People want to know what's wrong and how do I fix it? You know, it's not, don't give me my encyclopedia of genes. I don't need a full genome sequence, 22,000 genes. Tell me what I need to work on. Tell yeah. me the five genes I need to work on, right? And we broke that down into six things, which is if you go through these six, it kind of resolves most human mm -hmm. optimization. I want to prevent the disease. I want to slow aging down and I want to be at my optimal performance level. That's kind of what everybody wants. And if you go through these six things, you get that. And one, cardiovascular, we talked about that. So understanding the biggest killer in the world, yeah. which why it really happens. Why does diabetes really happen? What do you do about it? Uh, and then second is hormones. But in the hormone report that, that the consumer gets, we go more into the sort of applicable stuff like fitness, body type. How do I, if I want to put like on muscle. From my report, you might say avoid smoking and um, do some moderate cardiovascular exercise, maybe try some uh, sulforaphanes to help the estrogen. So you would give real practical recommendations based on that, which is one. Specific wonderful. recommendations, yeah, mm -hmm. that are based on the genome. Then we get into diet nutrition. And there's a lot of genetic tests out there that do nutrigenomics or tell you what to eat. We do it more at the sort of uh, biological level, meaning the macros. Are you a fat metabolizer? Are you is insulin resistant? Mm -hmm. Are you a starch metabolizer? How do you handle vitamin D? You know, vitamin D of the 22,000 genes in your body, 2000 require vitamin D yeah. to function. So literally 10% of your body's biochemistry is dependent on this one mm -hmm. hormone is what it actually is yeah. in order to function yeah. properly. Right? So now imagine if Vitamin D in your blood to go get a blood test is, is step one of three. Mm -hmm. And even if you have enough in your blood, it doesn't mean that you're doing genetic step two, which is transporting it to the cell where it's actually used. You could have plenty in the blood, but you never actually transport it. So you're not using it. You might not do step three, which is binding it at the cell and actually utilizing it. We have plenty of people that test fine, you know, at the doctors, but yeah. they have mood issues every winter. So they let's have, talk about what, like VDR, that's the receptor, right? VDR, exactly. I've the got receptor. that one for sure. So that's yeah. when at the receptor level, you need a higher dose to get to the, um, the, the message. Exactly. Across. Yeah. The regular dose isn't enough for you. And if you're not a good transporter, you mm -hmm. need multiple doses. Yeah. Right. Because you need to transport 10, but you only have two seats in the car. Yeah. Wow. Right. So then all of a sudden you need to do it multiple times. Mm -hmm. So understanding that one thing can completely change somebody's health because vitamin D is so important. Mm -hmm. So anyways, diet, nutrition. Uh, then we look at sleep because it's so important in terms of recovery, health. Oh, yeah. and, and this was something that we never even intended to do. It just every time we help somebody get healthy, sleep was a big part of it. And so we've understood sleep isn't about, hey, I can't sleep. No, it's I can't fall asleep. Yeah. 
or I can't stay asleep. I fall asleep just fine, but I wake up at three or 4 a.m. and I just can't get back to sleep. Or I sleep through the night, but I wake up feeling like crap. I didn't get good quality sleep. Genetically, these are three different things, right? Mm -hmm. Then we look at mood and behavior. So the neurochemicals of your brain, which is actually the biggest report, it's double the size of everything else. And if I had your DNA, which I do, <laughs> if I had never spoken to you, yeah. I don't need to, to understand your personality, do you procrastinate? Are you irritable? No. Um, you know, are you going <laughs> to, how deep are we going to dive in this conversation? Uh -huh. You know, how curious are you going to be? Yeah. Are you actually wired to be a clinician or not? That's all pre-written in your DNA because we understand how your genetics instruct neurochemicals, but we also understand what those neurochemicals equal in terms of traits, yeah. in terms of mood and behavior. So and I'll get into that using cool. my example. You asked okay. about entrepreneurialism. Yeah. Right? So, and then the last thing is in, inflammation, detox, and immunity. So that core cellular health, how mm -hmm. healthy are your cells and why and what to do about it. So going back to mood and behavior. So myself, uh, let's take the dopamine pathway. Most yeah. people are familiar with that. So dopamine is your ability to feel reward or pleasure. It does two things. So there's a gene called DRD2, which de determines how dense your receptors are. So your ability to actually bind that dopamine mm -hmm. and use it and feel it. I have a very sparse, poor quality receptor, so I don't bind much. There's a gene called MAO, which then is the responsible to break the dopamine up. So once it's bound, you need to get back to normal eventually. So MAO breaks it up. There's another uh, gene called COMPT, the same one that we saw that yep. clears the hormones, also clears neurochemicals. Mm -hmm. So I have the slim to none dopamine receptors, so I don't feel much. I have the fastest possible MAO and the fastest possible COMPT. Ah. So I feel it way down here and it lasts like that. Wow. So I have three potential outcomes. I don't ever get the pleasure or reward and I get depressed, which I was, as I said, when I was working. Wow, right? wow. yeah. Or I go down the pleasure route and I become addicted. Yeah. Uh, right. Because I, I, I found the thing that gives yeah. me that dopamine hit that I don't get to experience. And it's so satisfying yeah. that I have to keep doing it. I keep doing it. Too. Or I go down the reward route and I achieve. Yeah. Which is where I unintentionally landed yeah. because of I needed to because I was taking care of my mother, my mother and my sister because my father passed away. Right. So I literally had to take care of the family. So I started working. Wow. Yeah. Right. So I unintentionally went down this reward route and whatever I did yesterday just wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. That business I'm doing, I can do better. I met yeah. this guy. He's not as smart as me. I can do better than him. And then reward, 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 reward. And that's where, what I, why I walk away from a PR and marketing company to start a biotech company that I have no business doing. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and so that one pathway, now you can layer other things on top of that. Serotonin. Serotonin is your mood regulator. What if you don't do such a good job there? Uh -huh. You know, what if like me, I have the somewhat dysregulated ability to cope and deal with serotonin. Mm -hmm. So for me, all the details in the stimuli are slightly exaggerated. Yeah. So not only am I perceiving or sorry, pursuing reward, but I'm perceiving things a little more than they are meant to be, meant to be perceived, yeah. Yeah. right? In the meeting, when the clock is ticking, when the food is being chewed, whatever's going on, it, it bothers me. And that could present as ADD for some people, right? Because yes. Like distractible. Yeah. You're very right. distractible, right? Distract. And it's not that I'm distractible. I'm motivatable. Yes. And that's not even a word. I just made it up. Love so it. I get, Love it. <laughs> so I, I get drawn to things, right? And I just have to focus now that I know that on the things that will keep me drawn towards my goal, whatever I'm trying to do. So every stimuli, whether positive or negative, so it kind of looks like I'm bipolar. I can be bothered by something and irritated, but very easily brought back up to laughing and joking if I'm stimulated in that direction, yeah, yeah, right? I just need to be pulled. So I just got to be careful of what I'm being pulled. But guess what? That same serotonin going back to sleep, right? The thing we talked about, why is it that some people fall asleep? And this is the biggest sleep problem, actually, that we found. It's not that people can't fall asleep or they can't stay asleep. It's that they wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah. And why is it? Melatonin and circadian rhythm are the two things that kind of put you to sleep, your internal clock. And people do okay there. And there's enough melatonin supplements you can take that help you. Yeah. What people don't understand is melatonin is your go-to-sleep chem chemical. Serotonin is your wake-up chemical, mm -hmm. right? So you start making serotonin at that first light, that first stimuli. What if that first stimuli is your spouse pulling the blanket yeah. or it's getting too hot after three hours of sleeping uh -huh. or there's light leakage through the drapes? And you wake up because I think a lot of your listeners will know yeah. sleep isn't eight hours straight. It's, right. it's cycles, right? right. You, you're in and out, in and out. Some people can do that. Some people wake up 
and they can't get back to sleep because their body thought they're finished yeah. because their serotonin. And this was me. I used to, there was days where I'd wake up at 3 a.m. and start working. Yeah. I wasn't okay. I was still tired. I just couldn't sleep. Right. Now I know why. It's, so you're saying that serotonin, was it not broken down or was it uh, excessively being produced? So I have a slightly shorter uh, receptors. So I don't bind enough so that wow. that response to sim- stimuli is exaggerated. Yeah. Okay. That makes it so, right. so just so, little things would wake you up and you'd be cortisol, serotonin, everything the way. Okay. That makes perfect. Everything that's going. And then your body thinks it's time to get up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then you're in serotonin mode. The serotonin starts pumping, which is not meant to do until you're ready to get up. Right. 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 So that's, so these, these neurochemicals, once we started, and this is why we did what we did of meeting 7,000 people, because it wasn't until we anecdotally asked them, tell us about this, tell us about that, that we were able to collect okay. all these insights, right? Data, like we said, is dumb. Your serotonin isn't the best. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, we need to meet patients to find exactly. out what it means. So I'm curious. And again, we, I don't have my results right in front of me, but just that from what you've said, I love dopamine. I, I think I produce a lot of it. I actually think I don't break it down, but I also, I seek out adventurous kinds of things. Is that a pattern right. you see with genetics with the dopamine? So what we see typically, um, and this may have to do with the audience that comes to us, but we typically see one extreme or the other. We don't see much in the middle. Yeah. So what do we see? Me, the addict, uh-huh. the reward seeker, right? Then we also see the maximum dopamine receptors. That person is the binger. Ah, okay. Meaning that because it's so easy for them to experience pleasure yeah. and reward, they really aren't bothered to pursue it. Oh, yeah. Right? So okay. you go you sit in a meeting with them. Okay. They're going to talk about 10 things, you as a group, and next week comes by and they've done two of them. Yeah. And the eight, they never even, because they just don't care. Yeah. Right. Okay. But the two that they did, they will do better than anybody. Interesting. Okay. Because that's what caused them to experience that reward. And when you have high dopamine receptors, high density, yeah. you stay in the reward. You get lost mm-hmm. in it. You binge because it's so good to be in that. And that this week, when it's work, play, whatever it is, you yeah. can, the person that can watch eight Netflix episodes until 4 a.m. and just can't turn it off, yeah. that's the binger, right? Okay, I'm Versus guessing me. I'm more like you because I need to seek those like motorcycle riding and rock climbing. Yes. I love those little, because it, but it probably goes away pretty quickly. The little hits <laughs> and you and you need it structured. It's not, yeah. the binger just needs it when it happens. The addict yeah. needs it regularly. Yeah, okay. Right, if I don't get to the gym, I am extremely frustrated. Yes, years ago, same thing. I was addicted to exercise. It was like, right? same, yeah. Yeah, you're addicted. But the, the binger is like, I don't need to go, but when I go, I'm going to go. Like, I'm going to stay there for two hours, probably. Wow. Interesting. Right? Okay, this yeah. is fascinating. And again, I've known a lot about genetics, but I'm learning some new things here, too. And now, so I'm that, at, yeah, go ahead. So I, I'll, the last thing I was going to say with all that is imagine now knowing this about yourself, mm-hmm. and how personalized your protocols can be, meaning that one, go do this, right? Mm-hmm. Go do whatever you have to do. You have to first understand how do you even perceive what does go do this mean? Yeah. Right. How are you actually going to handle those instructions of take this medicine, do this exercise, go train your abs, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. How do you actually put that into practice where you stick to it and you don't fail? Mm-hmm. That starts with understanding how you yeah. think. Uh, fascinating. And again, so relevant for people to, to be able to access this. So what's the different you have, uh, I don't know, six or more different um, types of tests that, that can be ordered. Tell us about the actual yeah, so categories. In the one test, we provide all of what I've spoken of. So okay. the six sleep, cardiovascular, et cetera. Uh, we just believe that this is what everybody yeah. kind of needs, right? Uh, from there, if we want to get clinical, like if somebody says, well, you know, I, I have fibromyalgia or like mold sensitivity, mm-hmm. and they want to dive deeper and fix a problem, we have coaches that are trained on genetics that can build a program with you and they can work okay. with you for weeks on end. Uh, in fact, we even have uh, an executive program, which is where we started. We mm-hmm. first started off as super high ticket because that was the only way to do what we did. It right. was all hands-on with expensive scientists, right? So um, that still exists. Some people want that full, like, take my genome and just renovate me. Just yes, do everything, totally right? Do. <laughs> yeah. So that still exists. But for the most part, if you have the reports in front of you, it's actionable and it's easy. So you know where to focus. You know what to do about it. But if there's an actual problem you're trying to solve, I need to lose 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. I need to get rid of my fibromyalgia. I need, I have a fertility issue. That's where I would highly recommend getting on board with a coach yeah. to implement the behavior changes. Cause that's the biggest challenging thing for people is to actually stick to what's being told and yeah. not have the report sit in a drawer somewhere right. and then go on to the next test. Right. Yeah. 
fascinating. Oh my gosh, this is great. And again, I knew a lot about your company, but I learned some things today. I, like I said, I love the accessibility. I love the legibility, uh, the ability for people to take what they're looking at and implement it. And then the fact that you have coaches and you've really done an amazing job in developing the company to make it applicable. Um, if you're listening here um, on Facebook or on YouTube or on uh, wherever you're listening, we'll be sure and provide a link. If you want to order, you can directly contact the company. I'm going to put a link there for that. Um, what else is on the horizon? What's the, anything else coming out or that you're working on for future? Yeah, we, I mean, we are a research company at heart. Like that's what we truly do. We know that we have to allow people access. So we built reports. We built the artificial intelligence program. People can get into it but we never stop researching and learning. And I would say the two areas where my focus is sort of the most, what are the next steps? Yeah. It's female hormone health, like I said, because awesome. I think it's giving a report is not enough. I literally think we need a second medical system that works alongside of this one that was built on studying men. Um, you know, 70% of Alzheimer's patients are women, yet 70% of the research dollars is spent on men. Yeah. How does that make any sense? And that's why 70% of women aren't being helped, right? So that's the next thing we're doing is building that female hormone business. It's not just about a report, but let us clinically help you as literally a telemedicine clinic. The second thing we're doing is we're saying, anytime you're talking about prevention, the best thing you can do is start early. Mm -hmm. If I can give you, here's your instruction manual. I've decoded your genetics. Here's what all your instructions are telling all your cells to do. By the way, I can see this in 10 years, this in 20 years, and this, this in six years. Wouldn't you want that information when you're like five years old? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the second thing we've done, or we're working on, I should say, what's next, is we're reinterpreting all of what we know for kids. Oh, wow. That's because, cool. and why? I, because me, myself, the, the place I use this most in our house is for my kids. Yeah. Right. The place that how do I teach this kid versus this kid? How do I discipline this kid versus this kid? Why is this kid when I come and yell and say, why did this happen? One kid does it again five minutes later and the next kid can not look at me for two days. Right. 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 That um, goes back to the, the empathy genes you're yes. talking about and the ability to literally imprint negative stimuli or PTSD or trauma. Wow. Some people literally will burn that thing into them. And yeah. some people it's as if it didn't even happen. Wow. Right? So That's now imagine a lot of my childhood. <laughs> yeah. So imagine knowing that about your kids and, and everything else, body development. Should they be a linebacker? Should they be a ballerina? You know, all that focus stuff. What does my kid actually need? To me, that's the biggest passion project we have because I've seen the impact yeah, in our own, your own kids. family. <laughs> yeah. So and that's what we're doing. But you know, to get the reports, like where do we start? Yeah. Uh, I would even suggest instead of going to our website. People should go to the, the landing page that we have with you. Yeah. Why? Because they'll get extra stuff. Meaning if you go to our website, which is where people go, by the way, we, our website yeah. is where the general world goes to to buy. Um, we, I know that a lot of your audience is, is focused on sort of environmental health issues, mold issues, et cetera. Yeah. So we actually built a guide for mold and environmental health. Uh, which we're going to tack on to the report. So it's not a product you can buy. It doesn't exist on our website. It's just going to help people navigate the report for that specific yeah. issue. And it's the one area where even if you don't think you have an environmental health problem, you probably Exactly. Do. And you and I right. were perfect uh, you know, examples of that. I'm going to give yeah. you the out, like I so said, this link will be there, but it's easy to actually tell you. So write this down, go there, get the reports. It's just Dr. Jill, no dots or commas or anything, D-R-J-I-L-L dot DNA dot clinic. And then um, backslash. So just drjill.dna.clinic and would love for you to go there. You can order it directly and, and get your reports and that. And thank you for doing yeah, that. One of the reasons no I've problem. loving collaborating because you guys are so cutting edge at giving tools that we can empower our patients and our listeners. Yep. That's awesome. And, and I, I, the reason I'm urging people to go through that link is because we want to know who actually wants that extra document because yeah. otherwise it's not a thing that you can buy or it's not for sale, but anyone that comes through there will know that that's why you came. So we'll give you that extra sort of guidebook. Yeah. And thank you. Like I said, cause you empower me to help more people and to help patients. And this is something you can order. You don't need me to order. You don't need to see me in the clinic. You can actually do something about your own health, get the report yourself and uh, start working on that. And again, you guys have coaches. So if you do want some help, the DNA company will also support you in those other things that you potentially need. We're here to support whatever people need. And everybody needs a little different from just curiosity to yeah. I'm already, you know, you could be already optimized and just trying to find that next thing to work on to, Hey, I have a clinical representation of something. I just need some more advice beyond what my doctor's saying all of the above. 
Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time today for the great information. Um, we will uh, obviously be sharing these links for everybody. And uh, thanks again for your time. No, it was a pleasure. Awesome talking to you every time.